Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Gareth Greenaway joins me. We're going to be talking about camp, going to camp to get your Linux certification. Linux Camp 2016. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Gareth Greenaway. Episode 380, recorded March 22nd, 2016. Linux Camp 2016. This episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by DigitalOcean, simple and fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit digitalocean.com, and once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code FLOSS in the billing section to get your $10 credit. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free Libre open source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz. Merlin at Stonish.com, bringing you each week the movers, the shakers, the big projects, the little projects, projects you may be using every day and not aware of it at all, projects you may want to download right after this show or at least check out. Today's might be one of those as well. But joining me again as my co-host is Gareth Greenaway. Gareth, welcome back. Thanks, Randall. Glad to be back. It's been a it while. Seems- Seems like forever, I know. Well, you get a little busy there with that uh, little scale thing and uh, you become pretty unreachable at that point. So uh, I presume you're in your usual uh, bunker in Thousand Oaks? I am in my underground bunker in, in sunny Thousand Oaks, California. I'll wave in your general direction right about over there. Okay. And I am in, uh, for the last time, unfortunately, I am in uh, the Zip Recruiter uh, second floor conference room because they're rearranging a lot of the people that work here. I'm still going to be working up on 11, but I'll have to be using conference rooms up on 11 now because this one's going to be really busy down here. Uh, and so behind me is the wonderful blue sky of Santa Monica. Um, thank you again, Zip Recruiter, for allowing me a place to video videotape. Okay, I'm dating myself now. Videotape. All right, well, whatever it is. Okay, so today's project, get my notes over here, but today's project is in fact the Linux Camp 2016. Now, this could be a slightly different kind of show because normally we're talking about a project or a personality or, you know, something happening, a movement or whatever. This is something entirely different. This is about actually being Linux certified. A lot of uh, employers are starting to demand that sort of thing. Uh, 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 Gareth, how long has certification been going on for? Pretty, like, 10, 15 years? Uh, quite a while. I mean, as far as I know, um, ever since one of the, the, the for a lot of the first Linux distributions existed, they were offering certification. I think one of the first ones was, uh, was by Red Hat. Okay. And this is in particular Linux Foundations. Uh, I've got the notes here. Where is it? Um, Linux Foundations, uh, basically... Uh, uh, security, uh, not security, system administrator. So certified system administrator, CSA. So um, so what's happening here is Linux Camp is actually being held up in the mountains, up in Colorado. That seems really amazing, which goes over a four-day period. And there's food provided, places to stay provided. Obviously, no, no, you have to come in and out every day to this place up in the mountains. No. And it sounds like a really, really great uh, experience. We have the two uh, sort of founders and leaders, David Wilson and Heather Wilson. They'll be joining us in a few minutes. Uh, but it does look a lot of fun. I wish I had these dates free, but unfortunately, I'm already booked at uh, another conference where I'd actually kind of hang out for that. I'm also not much of a Linux guy. You know, I, I, I tend to incite people occasionally when they say my favorite uh, distribution is, is, is BSD. So that kind of throws people off. Um, I, I, Gareth, did you ever have certifications at uh, scale? We've had a few certifications, um, mostly the LPI and, and the BSD certifications. Um, and those have been re- really popular. People uh, really like them. Um, they, they tend to, uh, you put them on your resume and it, it tends to get you noticed. Um, so they're, they're usually really good things to have. Great, great. Well, I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more about that in just a couple minutes, but I have an important message before we start. Because whether you're developing an app, a website, or working on a server-based project, you need flexible, reliable, and affordable hosting. DigitalOcean offers droplets, which are virtual private servers that can be customized and deployed easily to host websites, web apps, production applications, personal projects, virtual desktops, and almost anything else you can think of with full root access. This helps you get your project off the ground quickly and makes it easy to scale when you find success. Digital Ocean is used by over 600,000 developers, including me. I first found out about DigitalOcean at last year's scale of all things, and there was a code to use it, and I also found out they had FreeBSD, and I went, yay, finally, FreeBSD in the cloud. Because you can deploy and configure your droplets via a streamlined control panel or simple API. Choose your OS. 
Ubuntu, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, CoreOS, and of course, FreeBSD, that's mine. Select from one of the many pre-configured one-clicks like Drupal, Docker, or Node.js to get up and running quickly or build the exact infrastructure you need with root access to servers running 100% SSDs in state-of-the-art data centers around the world. It's highly scalable to meet the demands of a rapidly growing application or business. You can also use the advanced features like floating IPs for high availability, private networking, and automated deployments via API. There's an extremely active community with a large and detailed set of tutorials on all the ways you can use your droplet. Want to configure a LAMP server? Set up a virtual desktop or VPN? They got you covered. And it's so easy to get started, you can deploy an SSD cloud server in as little as 55 seconds. DigitalOcean has incredibly affordable and straightforward pricing. Servers start at only $5 per month. There's also hourly pricing available starting at less than a penny per hour. But we're going to make it so you can get started today and deploy an SSD cloud server for free. Visit digitalocean.com and create an account. Once you confirm your email and account information, go to the billing section and enter the promo code FLOSS for a free $10 credit. That's plenty to get started and explore what DigitalOcean can do. That's digitalocean.com. And once you sign up, enter the code FLOSS in the billing section to get your $10 credit for free. We really thank DigitalOcean for their sponsorship of Floss Weekly. And let's go ahead and bring on our guest, uh, David Wilson. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Randall. And uh, where are we speaking? No, I got that backwards already. Where are you speaking to us from today? I am in beautiful Denver, uh, where we're having 70-degree weather today. Well, at least I think we were. We were yesterday. I haven't been out today. Cool, cool. And let's also bring on uh, Heather Wilson. Uh, welcome also to the project, or to the show. Hi, good morning. Great. And are you near David? I, I am near David. I am upstairs and he is downstairs. Awesome. Cool, cool. Well, uh, welcome both to the show. Uh, let's start with David. Can you give us sort of a background? Uh, did I, did I kind of get it right, kind of what this is about? Um, well, so the, the, the free part of it is the Software Freedom School. Uh, we're trying to create a body that uh, can share knowledge. Uh, Linux Camp is our big event every year. And so we uh, free the materials. The camp itself, the performance part, is uh, paid. Um, we haven't found a way to do it, uh, pay what you choose yet. Uh, all of our other events are pay what you choose. And so uh, what's somebody going to see and do, uh, and what are they going to walk away with uh, by attending this camp? Okay. Um, Linux camp includes uh, coverage of users and groups, networking settings, and I have this lovely uh, queue list that I made for myself so that I wouldn't forget these things. Um, mm -hmm. We cover users and groups, services, packages, storage and file systems, networking, bash scripting, NAS with NFS and SMB. And then this year, because we've changed certification targets, um, we're going to also cover KVM virtualization, LVM, and the LAMP stack. And so this is, uh, this is sort of like uh, umbrella certified then by Linux Foundation. How, how does that relationship work? Uh, we don't have a relationship with Linux Foundation. We target their certification. We're, our goal is to teach people how to be good Linux systems administrators, uh, how to function well on a team, uh, how to clarify technical requests, and then how to use Linux to satisfy those technical requests. Okay, but uh, there's still some sort of thing I can show my employer once I'm done, right? Yeah, once you finish uh, Linux camp, you will decide whether you want to use your voucher right then and take your exam at Linux camp or as quickly thereafter as possible. Uh, we give you a voucher, and then you decide when you want to use it. Uh, it's good for a year, uh, and you take the exam in the workspace of your choosing. You have to have a webcam uh, there because of the way that they do their exams. And at that point, then you have a certificate that you can show your employer or, or potential employers. Cool, cool. So it's, uh, that's good because it means I could, if, I, if I'm still a little rusty with the stuff after the three days, which is probably, or four days, which is probably intense to try to get all this stuff down, I can go off and study some more before I actually take the real exam to get the real certificate. Yes, uh, it's very serious fun. Um, we put a lot into the four days, 
and it's almost certain to expose a weak area in any systems administrator. And so there probably will be things that you want to uh, go back through and practice again before facing the exam. Uh, however, the LFCS has a neat feature that not uh, most exams have, and they, that is that they have a free retake. So if you botch the first run, you can think of it as uh, reconnaissance and take it again. So how did this all get started? I mean, you've been running Linux Camp, I guess, for a few years now. Uh, what was it like? You were sitting around a fire up there in the in the, in the woods, saying, "Let's uh, let's run a camp." It's actually a dream that I had for uh, over ten years. I always wanted to take a bunch of friends um, or uh, acquaintances up into the mountains and just soak in Linux for four days as a sort of a vacation, uh, a geek vacation. And this seemed like a good way to do that. Uh, so I talked with a few people uh, and we picked a certification target and went up into the uh, mountains. There were a dozen of us the first time, 13, I think. Uh, and we had a blast. We studied like crazy and worked like crazy. And uh, some people got certified and we had a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I really resonate with that because I've been uh, with a, my client now, Captain Neil, that's taken me on 79 cruises, which is over the 15 years, of course, but but has, has a similar sort of thing where we're, we're having a great time in a good location and with people that are like-minded and yet we still, uh, we're still actually having, you know, intense classes when we're at sea so that uh, we get the most value out for our money. So I can, I can really relate to that. Uh, Heather, I just wanted to ask you, uh, or I want to start asking you questions. So let's, uh, let's start with what's, what's your role with the, with the camp? Great. My role was initially to just be supportive of David. He he's had this dream of of gathering his geek friends up in the mountains and and I thought, well, I can support that. That seems cool. And then I thought, well, how do I get my talent involved, which is baking, cooking and serving? And so my role became head chef, I guess, so to speak. Um, I end up feeding all of the geeks. We've got breakfast and coffee and snacks and lunch and dinner. And occasionally in the evening, we'll, we'll drink some scotch with those delicious treats. Mmm, scotch. Okay, wait, let's, don't get distracted <laughs> here. <laughs> so, so what are your biggest challenges uh, in feeding? Uh, actually, I don't know how many people we're talking about. Is this like 30 or 40 or... No, not yet. We we do hope to get to that point. We range anywhere from 10 to about 16 people at any given time. Occasionally, I'll have some friends that will come and support and, and help do some prep work. Um, the biggest challenge would be dietary restrictions, and we try to accommodate those as best we can. But, you know, I'm not certified gluten-free or anything like that, but I usually will offer up some vegetarian dishes along with some wonderful meat dishes. Um, and then if we have folks that are, are gluten-free, then, you know, they'll have for breakfast, instead of having the, the pancake casserole or whatever, they can have some eggs and, and bacon. Mm -hmm. And what's, what are the cooking facilities like at the facility? facility that's redundant. What, yeah. What are yeah. They, <laughs> what are they, what are they, what's it like to cook there? There's a simple first. All right. There we go. Well, so the challenge is I like to cook with the things that I own in my home. So thankfully, we have, have a nice hippie van that we can cart a bunch of my stuff up there. But the cabin itself has dual stoves. It has uh, dual ovens mm. and dual microwaves. So we've got all kinds of, of different things that I can use to, to get those meals cranked out. Oh, and double refrigerators. And we've got a nice grill out front. So... I think that, you know, as far as, as the food goes, all the shopping goes down here. Costco is lovely and we can buy all those things in bulk. Um, I do a lot of the prep work down in Denver, a lot of pre-made cookies and muffins and scones so that it, there's less time that's necessary up there to get things cranked out. And, and, and do you ever deputize any of the uh, attendees or maybe uh, friends and family to help you with this stuff? Yeah, we, we have a friend by the name of Troy Ridgely who was um, our first year. He was a facilitator that supported David. And then a couple of the times after, he's been my kitchen helper. Uh, this year, we'll probably 
do just myself and and that's okay because that's something that I enjoy but all of the students they don't have to actually you know do dishes or anything like that but they do have to uh, put their dishes in the dishwasher when they're done that's about the only cleanup that's required of them cool so what David uh, just back to you for a few minutes um, some questions I had um, Traditionally, um, a lot of conferences, a lot of like Linux and open source conferences are in like hotels and convention centers and whatnot, where for the most part, people stay indoors um, the whole time. You guys have kind of gone in a completely different direction and, and gone to what looks like a really awesome place outdoors, um, which traditionally has not been where where the geeks kind of uh, frequently hang out. How, how, how do you find the, the kind of interest in, in the camp um, how has the interest in the camp been over the years? Uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, everybody loves the site, and uh, we get out during the breaks two or three times a day and play a little frisbee. And like Heather mentioned, there's a little scotch in the evening sometimes uh, for those that like that sort of thing. Um, and we do board games, and so our breaks are as intense as our work. And uh, so why did I pick it? Well, because I wanted it to be like a vacation. Um, and the best place that I had ever taken a technical training was in a harbor where I could go and take my break and look at the ocean. And I thought that that was absolutely awesome. Well, Colorado doesn't have a lot of ocean, but what we do have is beautiful <laughs> mountains. <laughs> nice. Um, so going back to the the kind of like the technical um, side of things, um, how exactly are the, the sessions run? Um, is it just you teaching the classes or do you have, uh, other people that you bring in, um, or, or, or are they all volunteers or how does that work? It depends whether or not I have help depends on the number of students. Uh, if I have, uh, for every half a dozen students that I have, I need to have an assistant. I need to have somebody that's out there helping them to get through the bits that they're unfamiliar with, someone else that's relatively senior. Um, otherwise than that, I can uh, teach the whole class myself. Uh, and I follow a form which makes it a lot easier and which facilitates the students uh, supporting one another. Uh, I don't know if anybody here is familiar with the nursing school method, see one, do one, teach one. I've modified that and I make it a show and tell where I talk about some feature that I want them to know about that I think is uh, useful in the field. Then I demonstrate it, uh, solving some common problem. And then I have them solve exactly that same common problem in pairs or triplets. So when you get to that stage, um, I, I would imagine that they need some sort of um, some material, some something set up um, in order to to be able to walk through those exercises. Um, what what are they? What are your 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 students um, responsible for bringing um, to the sessions, and what do you provide um, to allow them to to be able to work through those exercises? So far, every student has taken advantage of our BYOB discount where you bring your own uh, laptop and we do all of the work within VirtualBox. This year, because we're introducing KVM virtualization, I'm gonna be putting up uh, half a dozen servers and they'll be using those in combination with their VirtualBox installation. Okay. Well, uh, Did that make sense? Kind of, Did that yeah, answer yeah. the question? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, just kind of a curiosity: what what made you decide on um, early on? What made you decide on on VirtualBox um, as a uh, as a method for for teaching the the, the hands on sessions? Uh, it's the only free software that runs on every operating system that a student is likely to show up with. And so for me, it becomes a universalizing layer. Uh, I know that I can hand out a virtual box image or um, archive, and the student will be able to host it in their virtualization layer. Okay, makes sense. Um, kind of a, a, a kind of a different um different realm of questions, but uh, I would imagine that uh, putting this on every year is, is quite a, um, it takes, takes quite a bit of, of uh, resources and, and quite a bit of money. Um, is, is all of it from 
uh, the, the, the fees that the students pay for the classes or do you have uh, like additional sponsors that, that help out? Uh, we don't have any sponsors. Uh, Heather and I um, put in the seed capital ourselves. And uh, so far every year, the camp has turned a small profit. And every month we do a little event, uh, not necessarily Linux centric, but always free software centric on the first Saturday of the month. And we take donations um, at that time. And between those two things, between the student uh, the student's tuition for Linux camp and the donations at the monthly events, uh, we've been able to grow a little bit uh, every year. Cool. That's awesome. Um, are you guys a, uh, like a, a for-profit corporation or are you a, like a non-profit organization? At present, we're a garage sale. Ah, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so Heather, I wanted to ask you a couple questions. Um, sure. One of the, one of the things that, uh, I mean, as Randall said, uh, kind of when we started, um, I've, I've been one of the organizers for, for scale, um, each year, the Southern California Linux Expo. And one of the challenges that, that we always face each year is, is regarding food, um, especially depending on where we are. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've had um, over the years? I mean, you mentioned the uh, some people um, with with dietary restrictions, but what what are, are some of the challenges that you've uh, you've faced um, and run into over the years providing food for um, for for gatherings like this? I would say some of the challenges that that I've experienced are timing, and you know how because we've got. Class starts promptly at nine o'clock. Breakfast will start usually around seven to nine. How do you make sure everything is is prepared in time and kept warm? Because I don't come from a restaurant or hospitality background. It was all by the seat of my pants. Uh, so the fact that I can cook for you know twelve to to sixteen people or more has been an interesting and exciting challenge in and of itself. With some of our classes outside of Linux camp, David mentioned our, our first Saturday classes. That's a little more difficult because I'm not in a kitchen at a location when we oftentimes use hacker spaces or other offices of some of our friends. I've got to make sure that everything stays hot or, or cold for that matter and, and transport it. So Linux camp compared to the classes is pretty easy because I'm in a kitchen all day long. Have you been able to take your experiences from this and, and use them in um, other kind of non-Linux camp or non-event um, uh, capacity? Yeah, good question. So one of the things that I've been doing recently outside of Software Freedom School is being a commercial baker. And again, since my, my background doesn't come from hospitality, that was kind of an adventure in and of itself. Uh, the passion and the love that I have when when I'm making food for people is is pretty intense. So it's been really great to be able to take the experience from Linux Camp and and put that into you know quick breads and scones and muffins and things of that nature in the commercial bakery. Uh, so another question for David. Um, one of the questions we had from the the IRC channel uh, was. Uh, just any any success stories um, you've heard um, that people have come back to you after after the Linux camps um, of of because of the class they've been able to move on to like bigger and, and more important jobs. Um, if you could talk about that for a bit. Uh, without mentioning names, uh, we have had uh, several students come back and say that it's improved their ability to do their job. Uh, one person landed the job that they were looking for, and uh, another person got a cert certification that she had been wanting for a very long time. And, and normally people don't come back and say, well, I got my certification. That's great. But she was really excited about it. And so that was a big deal to her. That's awesome. Um so one of the things you mentioned um, regarding the certification, um, you, you mostly focus on on the Linux Foundation certifications. That, that's right, correct? 
Uh, that's this year. Um, I'm doing a pretty big rewrite because uh, I wanted to switch to a practical exam. Um, I think that the um, I, I wanted to get away from multiple choice and get to practical exams where you're proving um, that you know how to do a particular thing. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about today's crop of practical exams is that you're not allowed to use your thumb. You're not allowed to use Google, um, which I, I understand that it may be ne necessary, but it dramatically changes uh, the exam environment from the real world environment. I don't know too many businesses that ask you to uh, do your job without your thumb. That's true. Um, which which distribution do you do you mostly focus on um, during the um, during the the certification classes? Uh, the Linux Foundation certified sysadmin exam will let you take your exam on any of three Ubuntu fourteen oh four and pre presently um, Ubuntu fourteen oh four, OpenSUSE thirteen dot one, and CentOS seven. So those will be the distributions we'll be using at Linux Camp. Okay. Uh, do you do you see in the future um, ever kind of expanding and, and addressing? Um, I guess not addressing, offering other certifications like the Red Hat certification or um, the LPI certification or any of the others. N not at Linux Camp. Uh, I want to keep Linux Camp very plain brown wrapper, uh, very generic, um, agnostic. Uh, but we have done study groups, and I do do uh, on-site training sometimes um, by request, uh, and that will target RHCSA. And, and we have done study groups uh, to the Red Hat certification exams, and I look forward to doing study groups if I can get enough students put together uh, targeting uh, OpenSUSE. Uh, Ubuntu has dropped their certification program. Hmm. Um, if anyone's interested in like if, if anyone's interested or, in, or if someone was planning attending um, a future Linux camp and they wanted to kind of um, study ahead of time, is, is the courseware for the certifications, the, the Linux Foundation courseware, is it available for them to kind of review ahead of time? Yes, uh, the Linux Foundation's website is pretty good, uh, and they have their domains enumerated there. Uh, I've gone ahead and downloaded those and added them to the Git repository where I keep my materials. Uh, so if you go into our GitLab group uh, and into our Linux camp repository, you'll see a, my downloaded copy that I'll be using to do the rewrite. That's interesting that you store them in Git. So, so your your materials are open as well for for people to to go and read and use um, if they want to. Yes, and not just Linux Camp, but basically everything I write or create is uh, free as in freedom. That's uh, that's very admirable. Um, <laughs> One of the things that, that I was just curious about, um, again, like my, my experience is running, running the scale conference. Um, one of the things that we always get asked every year is, is whether or not, um, which we make a, a valid and, and admirable attempt to, to get as many as possible, um, but whether or not our sessions are, are taped and recorded for, for later uh, viewing. Uh, is that something that you, you offer with Linux camp sessions or is it just kind of a, an in-person uh, experience only. If someone wanted to do that, I would welcome it. Uh, I personally don't have the bandwidth. I need to uh, focus on teaching and um, my forte is in the in-person uh, sweat space uh, experience. And so um, I, re I really want to focus on that. But if somebody wanted to broadcast it, I would welcome that. Wow, cool. Hey, so as a fellow instructor, of course, I've been doing this way more professionally than I ever thought I was going to do in my life. Uh, one of the things that I found in uh, really making a successful course is to very, you know, all teaching ultimately is moving somebody from one state of mind to another. And the most successful courses are the ones where most of the people, if not all the people, are in the same initial spot. And then they want to travel a path that gets them to the roughly the same destination. How do you identify those endpoints for the courses you're teaching? 
So uh, the appropriate beginning point for Linux Camp in particular is any person who is enthusiastic about Linux uh, and has about a thousand hours of system administration under their belt. Mm. Uh, and then the the end point is that they're a well-rounded system administrator, uh, I hope, and uh, that they're ready to face the Linux Foundation Certified Sysadmin exam. Okay, so you're sort of teaching to the test, but it's a good test. Exactly. Um, it, the, the test is chosen as a servant to the class. The, the point of the class is to teach a person to be a well-rounded system administrator. The exam is chosen as a way of proving that that's happened. And uh, you, uh, now to slightly shift gears, uh, and thank you for your answers there, uh, slightly shift gears, uh, you keep talking about these other events that you have. What, can we talk about a few of those and what you've covered in these Saturday uh, events? Give me a moment to unlock my phone, and <laughs> I'll be happy to list a few. <laughs> you, okay. Maybe I should have. Uh, I should have. I should have warned you. I was going to ask this. Okay. Oh, it's the drawing a blank problem, and I have it in spades. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I apologize. We, uh, we've covered everything from Ansible to Zimbra. Going quickly. Ansible, Backup PC, Bash, BeagleBone, Black, B Big Blue Button, Bitcoin, Docker, Git, KVM, Linux, uh, targeting the LPIC one, RHCSA, RHCE, and now the LFCS, Nagios. Open Media Vault, Own Cloud, Postgres, Puppet, Python, Rails, Raspberry Pi, Ruby, uh, Security, Penetrations and Remediations, which was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> SFS Method, which is that uh, nursing school method mod that I uh, talked about earlier. Tahoe Laughs, uh, VirtualBox, and Zimbra. Wow, uh, except for a few of those, it sounds like the Floss Weekly back catalog. <laughs> We've interviewed almost all the people you've talked about and, and do things with. Uh, do you ever occasionally uh, invite people to watch one of my back episodes as preparation for your talk? Of course. Ah! <laughs> Got you, got you. You might consider that in the future, since we really have done almost all those at some point or another. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry for catching you off guard there. Um, is this who's who's competing with you? Is there anybody else doing this? I'm, again, I'm not in the Linux world, so I don't know the options. I know there's probably stuff at conferences, but is there anybody else doing this sort of remote sort of Linux camp? I guess literally using the name of your project. I think there are other people that have uh, the product name Linux Camp. Um, there are also people that call their product uh, Linux Boot Camp. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and as far as uh, the Software Freedom School, basically every lug is wired like the Software Freedom School, with the exception that most lugs don't pass a hat, and we proudly do. And uh, so you're the founder of the Software Freedom School as well? Yes. Um, okay. And what and what did, other, what had you decide to do that uh, other than wanting to share your love of knowledge of Linux, or is that the only reason? <laughs> well, that 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 really is the only reason. I just wanted something fun to do, um, and hanging out with friends, hacking on free software is uh, just preposterously fun. And um, Heather makes delicious food, which makes it even more fun. And uh, okay, so let's say I'm an attendee. Uh, you're an attendee. No, no. Okay, let's say I'm an attendee. And uh, what what kind of facilities uh, do I get a room to, of my own? Uh, you don't get a room of your own. You get a bunk. Um, the rooms will have between one and eight bunks. Uh, so it's first come, first served. If you show up at 6 p.m. on the night before Linux camp, you're going to be able to pick a room of your own. Uh, if you show up the morning that Linux camp begins, you're going to take whatever's left. So I need to find a way to get myself all the way up to the, the facility, the mountain thing, whatever it's called? Yeah, Snow Mountain Ranch. Uh, okay. You need to you need to get to Snow Mountain Ranch, uh, or I guess you could meet me in Denver and ride with Heather and I. And uh, how far is this from Denver? To 90 minutes, Heather. Okay. <laughs> Depends yes. on if you're in a fast car or if you're in our hippie van. Ah, uh, okay. Van. <laughs> yep. And at we this time of year. Sticker. We need the bumper sticker that says, stop honking, it's floored. 
Uh, <laughs> nice. And is, is this something that uh, is snow-free? I guess it would have to be that time of year, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's we've always been snow free. Um, the weather will sometimes get down to 50 or 60 degrees, especially at night, um, which is perfect for a campfire and a blanket. Um, and during the day, it's pretty pleasant, uh, 65 to 70. Oh, OK, so uh, just a warm coat or something will probably cover me at night then and gloves and a hat or something. <laughs> yeah, well, it depends on where you're from. <laughs> I guess right. These poor Southern Californians that probably have to bring the parka. <laughs> that gets cold. Um, and uh, I was just thinking. So we're you're way out in 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 the woods. Uh, what about connectivity? Do we do we get Wi-Fi? Do we get fast Wi-Fi? Uh, we have a really fast. <laughs> I'm going to curse myself. Um, <laughs> so far, we have never lost the internet. Um, and we've had a reasonable, uh, reasonably fast connection. Uh, we put up a, a gateway, which uh, makes for a strong local network, and then the gateway depends on uh, the wireless network that Snow Mountain Ranch provides. Okay, uh, and, and again, going back to the technical content a little bit, because you're teaching system administration, one of the things that uh, that also includes are things like setting up DHCP and and uh, networks and stuff like that. Are you using multiple virtual boxes to kind of test that out? Yes, and um, I keep the... I haven't taught the students um, IP infrastructure, DHCP and DNS, uh, although I will have to add a little bit of it this year because it's in the domain. Um, I We start at the level where the network is already built and you're putting up file servers and stuff like that. Uh, so this is your, um, just uh, again, shifting gears, um, kind of jumping all over the place. Um, My favorite. This is your... Yeah, this is your this is your only. You run multiple events, but this is your only uh, camp style event. Um, do you see yourself running um, additional events, additional camp style events in the future, um, potentially in other places um, besides like Colorado, or is it just kind of like you want to focus on this one for now? If I can get uh, more time. Um, well, if, if somebody wants to help me set it up, then I would love to run Linux camp twice a year uh, and have the other one be someplace else. And then if I can get the time, uh, I'd like to write a pie camp for kiddos uh, or for whole families, even better. Uh, and then I'd also like to do a DevOps camp. Ugh, I said DevOps. <laughs> Uh, so uh, just a question that, that Randall posted me on the back channel. Do, do you ever consider... Um, hosting it someplace warm? Uh, Florida would be great. And um, <clears throat> uh, I, I, I have an ally in Florida. Nice. So um, this, is so my, this is my sideways hint to my ally to get it put together. Nice. Uh, as, as far as the Linux camp goes, uh, what, what do you see um, kind of the future of it being? Like how, how what additional... Um, changes do you do you want to bring it how how big do you see it getting um just just any 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 future direction that you see it going in um if you want to share that uh i'd like to get it uh, the the two big goals for me are number one i want to have enough people that we can move to a larger cabin uh and have more uh camp counselors that's that's a big deal. Um, I don't want it to be end up being the David Wilson show, although that's very gratifying. Um, I want it to be more of a camp camp experience. And um, then the other goal, uh, and this one's a big one, and I'm kind of disappointed that I haven't hit it yet, is that I want to open a pay what you choose option for um, Linux Camp. I want some students to be coming from corporations and funded or and, and self-funded from their own means, but then I also want to be able to welcome students that don't have means and don't have funding. Yeah, that's yeah. That that those are. Uh... I, I would say um, admirable goals and, and definitely uh, um, I would say attainable. Um, if, if anyone is interested in kind of helping you reach those goals or um, uh, it, it, it helping out with starting their own Linux camp or, or helping you run, run the existing one, um, what's the best way to, for them to get involved? 
I would say shoot me an email. Um, if you just want to take my stuff and you think that I'm um, funny looking, then go ahead and do that. And I encourage you to do so uh, for any purpose and every purpose, including commercial. Uh, but if you don't think I'm funny looking and you think I'm funny and smart, uh, instead, uh, get together with Heather and I. Uh, we'll buy the coffee and we will teach you how to run your own Linux camp or we'll get you involved in ours. Awesome. Uh, so one one final uh, question, um, just from the uh, from the the IRC channel. Um, we may have touched on this already, but just to to make sure that we just in case we didn't, um, if someone's interested in attending Linux Camp, what what does their experience level need to be? Uh, they want to have about a thousand hours of Linux system administration logged. Uh, it can work with less, uh, depending on the skill of the learner and the breadth of the stuff, the breadth and depth of the stuff that they've covered. Um, but basically, uh, we're looking for the person who got pulled into Linux system administration at least part time about six months ago or about a thousand console hours ago. That sounds that sounds like a, a fair goal, and it sounds like that's a good way to start uh, in terms of making sure that you're not teaching people what top is, you know, because that would be that would be really bad because then we everybody would stuck. Hey, we're just about out of time, but I wanted to make sure we covered everything you wanted us to cover. Uh, is there anything we've left out? Can I do shout outs? Sure. All right. Uh, Aaron Brown, Chris Fetty, Dan Kalinsky, Dave Anselmi, Doug Corwine, Duncan Fetty, Gary Romero, Jeff Skelza. Jeffrey S. Hamer, what? Kevin Fries, Kevin Kempter, Lauren Ricker, Mar Williams, Matt James, Matt Schaub, Mike Schaub, sorry, uh, Rich Glazier, Rich, Ross Brunson, Sylvia Briscoe, Troy Ridgely, and, um, and all the people that I just forgot who will email me about it. Um, thank you so much for your help and uh, your encouragement. So are these people that helped produce previous events? Uh, Troy Ridgely was the, uh, we call him the kitchen bitch. I didn't bleep me if I guess <laughs> in the uh, recorded version. Um, but, uh, Troy, Troy helped with everything. Um, he helped to get the uh, first one off the ground. Uh, and Gary was the catalyst. He was the one that, uh, he was the first person to commit to Linux camp before Linux camp was even a thing. Um, and, uh, Ross has been there every uh, single year as our exam proctor and a major encourager. And week after week sends me wonderful, encouraging messages to uh, keep working on this. Uh, I also have just, just a random question. What's the furthest away someone has come from to attend? Um, Mike O'Lear came from Pennsylvania, I think. Ah, so all just in the U.S. then, basically. Nothing overseas yet. Come on, Brits. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, maybe they need to, uh, you know, use left-hand drive Linux or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh, right-hand drive, I guess it is, right? Whatever it is, it's backwards from ours. Um, uh, well, uh, and also one last sizing question. So if by some chance now appearing on this show, which has quite a sizable audience, you got 20 more requests to, to come to this year's camp, uh, could you accommodate that? I would call Snow Mountain Ranch and ask if I can reserve the big cabin. Cool. So, so you you're actually ready for you're up for anything that can come out of this. Because, like I said, we get a, a pretty big audience. So, uh, I hope that all works out for you, actually. And I hope that this sort of uh, spirals into uh, more and more as as you keep developing this every year. Uh, I have two final questions that I have to ask everybody who appears on the show, uh, uh, and we'll start. I, I'm not sure Heather will be able to answer these, but we'll give it a try anyway. So we have a. Uh, 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 we'll start. We'll start with uh, David, of course. Uh, uh, what's your favorite scripting language? Bash. Okay. And what's your favorite text editor? Um, it's growing to be Adam, uh, but I also yeah. love Gedit. Okay. I, oh, Gedit. I don't think I use that one, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm sure everybody that knows Linux is now screaming at me, saying, "That's one of the common editors in Linux. How come you don't know about it?" Well, anyway, whatever. Uh, and, and and Heather, does it make sense to ask you either of those two questions? It it doesn't, but okay. <laughs> um, I would I would say my favorite scripting language in a world other than technology would be in the 
Recipel area, which is a lovely software system, although be it proprietary, that you can put your recipes in, scale up and scale down. And favorite word editor, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have one. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It's uh, it's all good. We, we're all good at what we're good at, and that's a tautology, and I'm sticking with it. Uh, so, uh, David and Heather, thanks for coming on the show and talking about your camp, and I wish you much success. Yes, it was Thanks for having us. Thanks, Randall. Very cool. Very cool. That was David and Heather Wilson talking to us about uh, um, <laughs> Linux Camp 2016. What you, what'd you think, Gareth? <laughs> uh, it sounds really interesting. It sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Um, I mean, one of the things that one of the aspects of, of going to conferences and, and going to events that I always liked um, is just kind of the, the after hours um, gatherings um, and just like sitting around talking with people and um, the the possibility of, of going to something like this out in the out in a, a bit. I mean, it looks beautiful from when I'm looking at the photos on the site, but basically out in the middle of nowhere, sitting around a campfire and, and just chatting with people just sounds like a really good time. Um, so I'm, I'm, as you said, equally, uh, equally, uh, disappointed that I am unavailable that, that, that time, because it sounds like, uh, it could be a lot of fun. Yes. Yes. And I enjoy the Denver area. I've been there uh, at least a half dozen times. So, uh, and I've flown over it many times, <laughs> I've flown <laughs> everywhere many times. So yeah, this is, this is great. I'm glad people are doing this. I'm glad, uh, you know, this is, this is, you know his vision to to really uh, deliver this and and open it up for people to uh, not be quite so afraid of uh, you know when your boss says oh well, we need to set up the virtual private network for these boxes in in Cleveland and to actually have maybe some hands on experience with that and and look at stuff like that so I'm I'm really happy about that that's that's really cool so uh, uh, let's look at what's coming up on Floss Weekly um, we've got a bit of a crisis that we had, but uh, we have handled the crisis. I, I am going to be on an, yet another of those cruises uh, coming up in uh, mid-April, and uh, I couldn't let the schedule not be weekly. I mean, that would be silly. So the way we're going to work that out is uh, over the next four or the next two weeks, we are doing not one, not one, but two shows each week. Boy, was that fun to organize. <laughs> so uh, that will build up a supply of you know, filling in the two weeks that we're out and make sure that all of our sponsors are happily taken care of by getting their names mentioned over and over again in the air. And we also added to fill that in a new guest who's appearing twice. Uh, a lot of you have all said, hey, Randall, you're the Pearl guy. How come there's not more Pearl stuff on this show? Well, guess what? We've got uh, coming on uh, on the next show uh, will be William Braswell, uh, who is uh, going to talk to us about the future of Pearl performance. So Pearl 5, uh, has been getting faster and faster over the years, but also getting slower in some things. So uh, there's been a lot of people looking at how to really make, continue to make Pearl 5 the workhorse that it has been for 25 years. And uh, so he's got a number of initiatives that he's coordinating. Uh, if you go to the site pearl11.org, that's taking Pearl all the way to 11. Yes, yes, it is that. It is the joke from... Uh, from the movie, from Spinal Tap. But yeah, so Pearl 11's where a lot of the projects are, are described, and he's going to talk about sort of the overall uh, coordination of the projects and why we're doing this and and who's working on it, that sort of thing. Uh, we then, following that, we have the OSCON preview, uh, which we're going to get to two of the senior people from OSCON to talk about what's coming up in a month or so, or two, no, two months, I guess. Three months? Two months. It's not that far away. I'm already booking my travel there. So, um, uh, and by the way, they want you to know that if you use the code FLOSS, F-L-O-S-S, you'll get a 20% discount. And that's a pretty expensive conference. That's actually a pretty sizable chunk of money to get back. So, uh, then, Wilson, Wilson, Will, William Braswell, they let anybody do this show, uh, is going to come back and talk about one of the specific projects, R Pearl. And it needs its own show because it's really fascinating. They take a slight subset of Perl and they compile it down to C code and then compile the C code with inline C, if you're familiar with that. So portions of your code are essentially running full speed as a binary and it's all interpreted dynamically to, on what parts are eligible to do that with. And then the rest of it's just running in straight Perl. So uh, really, really cool project. Actually, it's pretty mature. It's been around, I think, for about three years. So we're going to talk about that. And then... Uh, Following that will be a, uh, the two-week gap, but I don't think it's going to come out as a two-week gap. I think they're going to shuffle the shows to make sure that those are filled. And then right after my cruise, we'll do BUI, which is a private community-based crisis response system. So um, 
And also because we're doing two shows a week, uh, they won't be just on Tuesday. You can't double stack Tuesday. In fact, next week's shows are on Wednesday and Thursday. There won't be any live show Tuesday. There might be a rerun or something, but there won't be any live show on Tuesday. And then uh, the following week, it will be Tuesday and Thursday. I know how complicated that sounds. Watch my tweets. Watch the Google+. Plus. We'll make sure you're going to get there on time. We're going to update the schedule on the Twit calendar and stuff like that. So that's how it's going to go. A little confusing. And speaking of that, if you go to twit.tv slash floss, which is the homepage for this show, uh, you'll see the updated dates on those. And so if you're trying to figure out when you want to tune in again, that's all there on the big spreadsheet. Uh, of course, if you have guests that uh, you want on the show, uh, e email them and have them email me, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, and we will take care of you. Uh, I've just I've still got about four or five more open slots for Q2. Uh, I have sent out 16 emails over the weekend, and that means I'll probably get one or two more bookings. Uh, and that, that's the work I'm doing behind the scenes to make sure these shows are all filled. Uh, we have a live stream at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays, uh, like this show was. But, of course, when the show's on Wednesday, guess when it's going to be? Wednesday. When the show's on Thursday, guess when it's going to be? Thursday. So there you go. You have to follow along to figure out what it's going to be. Um, and you can follow us at Floss Weekly on Google Plus or at Floss Weekly. It's tweeted over to on Twitter. You can follow me at, at Merlin on Twitter. We're Merlin with a Y. And on Google Plus, uh, Randall L. Schwartz. I have just finally been confirmed to be at the four big shows I like to be at every year. OSCON as, as press. Gapsy North America as press, although I'll have a five-minute uh, uh, lightning talk. Uh, FISLE, which is the big conference in Porto Alegre, Brazil, coming up actually a couple weeks after the Olympics. So it's probably going to be a mess flying down there and flying back. But I'm going anyway, uh, and I'm a speaker there for sure. And then Dragon Con have been accepted again for this year. So I will be uh, the first weekend, uh, well, Labor Day weekend, I will be in Hotlanta uh, speaking on the EFF track and on probably on the podcasting track. I'm hoping so. They should really accept me this year. That's enough plugging for me. What do you got to plug there, sir? Uh, I will plug an upcoming talk of mine, actually. I'll, I will be speaking on a panel um, at the upcoming uh, SALT conference, um, SALT SAC uh, developer conference um, in Salt Lake City. Uh, taking place April 19th through the 21st, um, 2016. Um, so I will be I will be on a panel talking about um, different user interfaces, um, user interface options for uh, for SaltStack. So that's, oh, that's a lot awesome. of fun. And, uh, and my current client here is a recruiter. They are uh, actually moving from a custom written Perl script to deploy everything to a completely standardized Salt Stack. So uh, they're having fun, you know, rehearsing it, testing it, while keeping the system actually up and running with the with the the legacy code, the legacy organic code that they've had. So it's been been a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, I'd say definitely. Uh, so you're speaking on user user interfaces. Cool, cool. Well, uh, uh, what was that again? Salt Lake City. It's in yeah, Salt Lake City, April nineteenth through the twenty first. I'll be on a cruise ship. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well, somewhere in the oh, Caribbean. Well. <laughs> I know. I, I live Randall. a rough life. I know, I know. Well, Gareth, it's good to have you back because I think it's been about two or three months since you were on last, and uh, I hear you can occasionally drop by a little more often these days, so uh, that would be great. And especially when it, you're, we're covering something about Linux, because I know nothing about Linux. Except <laughs> it looks a little bit like Unix. That's all I know. All right. Oh, now I'm going to offend a whole bunch more people. <laughs> 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 well, before I get uh, dig myself too much further in the hole, we'll see you all again next week on Floss Weekly. Bye.